Maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm not. All right, very excited to have my friend Mark Spears, senior writer for The Undefeated on the podcast. This is your first time on the podcast, so I appreciate you you joining me, even if it is uh, in from the bubble, live from the bubble. But, but everybody's curious about the bubble, right? So it's kind of cool, right? In a sense. Well, you guys are part of history, really. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it. I, I mean, it's just it's so interesting to me because the setup is so unique. And like I said, I got I talked to Taylor Rooks, talked to Mark Medina last week, and now you, you guys really are. You're gonna be in documentaries twenty years from now. You know, like when we're when we're talking yeah. about all this for years to come, like you can say you were there. You you experienced it firsthand. No, I think it is definitely a cool book, uh, bar story once we're able to go back to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Which may be yeah, a really long bubble, time. Right? You know, like I, I could, it, yeah, this is it's history. And because of the social justice stuff that's happening, like, and Joy, you know, that's really important to me. And what I do with the Undefeated is twice full. You know, they're just so, hearing what these guys have to say. Like, if anybody was worried about them keeping hope alive in here they're just getting started well that's good i'm that's really good to excited to to see what they got planned what they're talking about behind the scenes come to reality and then we got this science experiment going on at the same time so it's this is this is like the one of the most unique maybe the most unique experience in my life and i've done a lot of stuff <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's unprecedented times for 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 so many reasons, right? Like just COVID itself, none of us have experienced anything like this. I mean, we, none of us were around for for the Spanish flu at the you know beginning of the yeah. century. Um, just the you know the government shutdown and everything that's going on with politics, as you mentioned, social justice in a in a completely new wave than than I've certainly seen in my lifetime, being thirty three years old. So. It's it's a lot, but I think that the NBA has done an amazing job. Owners too, um, you know, Mark Cuban's been having a lot to say about it as of recent. To not only support the players as far as health and safety, um, listening to what they want and what they need as far as restarting the season, but also making it very clear that we're going to support the players and what they have to say about social justice as well. Yeah, and I'm gonna say this: that you being a black woman, you should be proud of your boys in here, because they are saying Breonna Taylor's name, you know. And I don't want to get emotional about that, but that's that's cool. It is. It is. I'm. Yeah, I am very cool. proud. I'm very proud of not not just NBA players, but a, a lot of, especially the young athletes who have really recognized. You know, mm. we have a, our voice has a lot of power. We have a lot of influence and we're not replaceable. Yeah. We're just not. So, so whatever they're, we're going to say, they're you young, to. Like, I don't think a day has gone by where I haven't heard her name. That's amazing. Not a day. Today was CJ McCollum. You know, like every day somebody says her name. So if, if you're worried about uh, her name, like, not, like, cause I, I kind of felt like before we got here, things were kind of quieting and, there are the protests have stopped. COVID is taking over the news again. But at least in here, and maybe this is the only place where it's loud in America, but at least in here, it's daily, man. It's daily. And there's going to be something that's going to happen at the games that's going to be unique and special. I talked to Anthony Davis today, and he's like, we're not tipping our hat. We're not telling y'all what we're doing. But he said, as a team, we're talking daily trying to figure out what we want to do because like when you look at the lakers they got the biggest platform uh you know anthony davis and lebron aren't going to wear the uh, social justice message on the back of their jersey and that's their prerogative I, I applaud the guys that are i think it's amazing to do that you know i've been talking to kyle corber i think of a white man that has black lives matter on the back of his jersey like come on man that's dope you know you know what i mean but in the same token, like LeBron and AD feel like they got something else they could do. You know LeBron got something up his sleeve. It might be a commercial. It might be like AD said he's got some unique shoes that are going to have a message. But the Lakers have the biggest platform. So I'm really, really curious a week from today what they do. But I'm curious about what everybody does. Like, I want to go to every game, not only to watch who, because 
like, yo, I was in the gym yesterday, and to see Melo working on his jumper, and CJ and Dame doing things together, and Taco Fall and uh, Jason Tatum playing one on one, and Pascal Siakam working on some moves. I'm like, yeah, we're back to hoop. We're getting back to hoop. But then you go to the arena and check out the arena today, and it brings you back because it says Black Lives Matter on the court. There's Black Lives Matter flags by the arena that they're going to play in. So it's just, it's a lot, man. There's really a lot to uncover here. And um, it, it's it's deep. It's really deep here. And I hope that the people on the outside can, I don't know if they can feel it yet, but they're going to feel it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they can feel it yet, but you're giving me a lot of inspiration about what what could be coming for viewers. And that's why I... You know, I respected what Kyrie said about, you know, it might be a distraction if we come back and play. But I felt like everything that you're saying now is why it was important to come back and play. Obviously, we know the economic impacts of not finishing the season. We know, you know, that there's a whole ripple effect if they hadn't come back as far as all those things are concerned. But as far as the movement and the message, I felt like coming back, especially after not having sports all summer, being able to have that platform and you know people are going to watch. Like all this talk about boycott this, boycott that. We see. We'll see. Yeah. You don't have yeah, sports, yeah. you're going to watch. I don't care what yeah. you have to say. Like you can pretend oh, it. I mean, you can the go biggest out and say you're not. Or basketball fans, you know, like that. And but the, here's the thing. You, you want to watch hoops, you're going to get a message. But that's what I that's what I that's what I felt like was the most effective yeah. thing to do and I'm glad that that's going to that's going to happen cuz that's uh that's meaningful to me to and, use and that look, and, and like me and you were talking about it right now if they weren't playing we wouldn't be talking about it Right right If you weren't preparing to play we wouldn't be talking about it like now they're on Zoom calls that media from all over the world could watch their their messages are on Twitter Instagram TikTok I guess I don't know I'm not a TikTok <laughs> dude but before they came here, the messages weren't being amplified. They weren't really saying anything. So, you know, it's a squeaky wheel, get the oil. Right. Like and, you, you, I, what I don't want to happen, what I was af- afraid of happening if they didn't come back was you don't want to preach to the choir, right? Like we are always going to look for that message and we are going to, you know, follow them and follow them on social media. But if you necessarily don't want to hear that, you can find ways of avoiding it. But if you want to watch basketball, you're not able to avoid it. Yeah. And I and like, and I talked to what I'll be curious about too, is what players decide to keep the social justice message on their jerseys for the entire season. Like Marcus Morris is one of those guys. Like to me, four days isn't enough. I'm going to have it. So for the guys that d- decide to have it on the, the entire season after four days, the social message is on the top of the number. Their name is on the bottom of the number. So that, I think that's kind of cool, too. Yeah. You know, it's still there. Yeah, um, and it shouldn't go away. Yeah, and it will be interesting. It'll probably drive some media crazy. Hey, uh, Kyle, how did you do? Score 40 today? Well, I want to talk about Breonna Taylor right now. I want to talk about Black Lives Like, it's coming. Like, get ready for it. There's going to be some very interesting post-game interviews. Don't turn the TV off when the game's over. But that's what I was hoping for, right? Like, Marshawn Lynch obviously did this completely unrelated to social justice, yeah. right? But, like, he was one of the one of the real memorable people to say, you know what, this is, this is actually my time. And if I want to yeah. say I'm just here so I don't get fined, I'm going to say that. And there's nothing that you can do about it, right? And we're just, you know, we're nerds. We're dorky media people. We don't matter. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not getting upset yeah. with what an athlete says in post-game press right. conference, right? Like, just because I have to get a sound bite. But to me, that's the space, right? Like, you, you want to hear from the players? So just keep the message going every time there's well, a hot mic. Another thing is, the players have the ability to use the media now more than ever. Now, it ain't just the undefeated listener. Everybody's listening. Everybody wants to amplify their messages. Well, not everybody, but most do. And so, you know, media that you wouldn't think would tweet it out or write about it. Now they're writing about it. Now they're talking about it. And it's, it's, it's the, I think the challenge for them is keeping it going past the first week. It's going to be loud the first week because every, every team's going to have a first game. Right. And they're like, the Raptors aren't playing for the first time until the third day. So, okay, 
when the first round starts, how do you keep it going? How do you, like, these guys can't tire. They can't grow weary. They can't, like, ah, well, I said it. No, I think they got, I, I don't think they will quit saying it. I don't know. I think they will, will continue to give their messages. And But when whenever has the media been this helpful, been this interested, been like, yeah, we, we want to talk about it with you, like, Think about I like all those press conferences when you, you know, saw civil rights leaders talking in the '60s, and it was all condescending interviews. Yeah, so your movement, what are you trying to do now with your movement and your, you know, now it's like tell us, you know, and so unlike the lynch thing, we're not fighting against you, right? We're with you, so use us, and and the players I think get it. And like the one thing I'm like, oh man, this is the they're excited to see me, like, cause they know that's what I write about. So, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I like going to practice now. I like, they, what you want, Mark? Hey, Mark, I'm over here. Like, come talk to me. <laughs> uh, well, you're always popular, but um, I saw some shots today of the of the court, and I, I wasn't really knowing. I didn't really know what to expect visually. Um, yeah, and you you don't know yet either. It, it, it's, Wait till the digital stuff comes. So there's more. Oh yeah. So you, did more. you see? You saw it today. I seen it already. Saw okay. it already. And what do you but, think? You know, seeing Black Lives Matter. I like. I love seeing that on the court. I kind of feel like it might be like a 2K game. Okay. Like I think they're gonna use some sound effects, kind of like they did with. Uh, or I guess they're gonna do with baseball, or they're gonna, you know. But. It's gonna it's gonna look like some futuristic crazy game because unlike baseball, they could they build their own environment. Right. Like baseball has to go to that stadium and you notice all those empty seats. I don't care how many cardboards they put there, but what they are gonna do is like I think there are gonna be some fans that are gonna be able to like watch the game and look at something and like cheer and everything you're gonna see faces it's gonna be kind of unique i think you kind of seen it in uh soccer in english premier soccer matches yeah you've seen some of that i think the nba is going to incorporate some of that and i asked somebody i'm like okay so what if somebody does something out of pocket you know what do you he's like yeah you know it's going to be tape delayed so if somebody does something they don't need to be doing obviously you won't really be able to hear them only but here's another thing to that point that's going to be funny is like uh, Danny Green mentioned today is, yeah, there's going to be some stuff said on the court that people probably don't need to hear. Right. You've been at a playground. You yeah. know how it gets down at the playground. You've been at those pickup games and those gyms and listen to, man, if, if, trust me, I can already hear the DJ music amplified. They're going to have that loud, man. But the one thing that's going to be cool for the media the seating is limited, but for when we do go to a game, we're like close. I haven't been this close since early in my career. <laughs> we're getting back to these. We'll have these really close seats. Um, I think because they have to put us close because there's two tiers of media. I'm sure you know this. There's like the people in the bubble, but there are going to be some media outside the bubble. They get to come to the games, but I, I went in there and it's weird. Like they're up above. Because they're so not they, in the same quarantine as you are. They're, they're going to be tested and stuff like that. But they're basically, I saw like the entrances. It's really strange, man. It's like I get off a bus, go into an entrance and I go to the right. And then they have another checkpoint where people come in to the left. And I like, I think they're like checking their temperatures and stuff like that. But like, check this out. Like I got yelled at today because I went to Lakers practice, right? So you see this. Right. Okay. This opens my door, right? Right. But when I go into a practice area and I check in, I have to use this to check in and I need a green light, which comes from every morning. I got to take my temperature with this okay. electronic. It's electronic gadget they gave us take our temperature. Then I put this on my finger. And it gives you like an oxygen number. Okay. So then I go into my phone. I go into the NBA health app. And I have to put in what my numbers were. 
It asked me, have I been around anybody that's had COVID? Have I been in a compromising position like in the last 24 hours? Like they're asking me all these questions. And I have to say the truth on record. I mean, not, nobody here that I know has it. So right. I say no. So today I go and I go, and it was, I'm supposed to get like a blue and it was green or a green and it was blue. And the guy's like, you didn't, you didn't do your temperature yet. You didn't get your oxygen. I was like, oh man, I forgot. He's like, we're going to let you buy. But you need, you need to get, you need to get that done, and we're not letting you in. And I'm like, dang, they ain't playing. Man. <laughs> 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 and I thought I was good because I got, I got my um, COVID test at like 10 a.m. Right. I got that done early. That's important. And, I got that done. But and you like, have you know, to do the nose swab every day. Every day. That's and it hurts, right? No. Not anymore. You used to it. We ain't got, we ain't got the ghetto test. <laughs> <laughs> where they're swabbing your brain. They have, they have one brother doing my test who's a little rough, though, man. I had to tell him about himself. I'm like, come on, Carl. You're a little heavy-handed, man. You need to, like, can I get one of the ladies to do it again? Because they're a little nicer and, and more gentle. You're, he want to shove his whole fist up my nose, you know? But, but it's weird. Like, they give me, uh, they do it under my tongue. Right. Or they swab my tongue. And this lady today swabbed it twice. The first time I got my tongue swabbed twice, and then they they put that in a jar, and then they do one nostril, put it in a jar, and another like they do the tongue and both nostrils. Well, I'm, I mean, it's good to hear that they're being so thorough because they had, I mean, no no positive tests of any of the players. That's great news. I mean, shoot, nobody could be there, nobody. Right, <laughs> right, but I mean, it, like, there's been such like waves with this this testing that. You know, you would have expected, like, even with even with quarantine, like, it would be possible. Like, I saw a player yesterday, and I, I know you've seen players do Zoom interviews. So to yesterday was, like, when all of us media were, like, it was, like, the first day of school. We were able to go to all these interviews. When they're doing they're doing a Zoom call for people that are, like, say you wanted to listen to Lakers, right? You could get the Zoom code and listen to it. But then now there's actual reporters that are on the premises. Right. So they'll take questions from us and they'll take questions from the Zoom call reporters. But before they start, the player has a mask on and like, um, here's Anthony Davis. We need you guys to social distance from him. And we all got masks on too. Right. So yesterday, one player was had to do a Zoom call and they're like, no, you can't. And like, what do you mean? Go get your mask. <sighs> you know, because when they're practicing with each other, they're not wearing a mask. They're doing right. their thing. So he had to like run all the way on the other side of the court, get his mask before he could do his interview with the media. Like they're not playing, man. They don't care who they are. That's great, though. That's that's great to hear because it. We really want to see it all the way through, right? Like I, this is such an unprecedented situation. It's so unique, and there's so many factors to how it could go wrong. That yeah. them being thorough all the way through is. It's super necessary. Yeah, I mean, for Russ Westbrook not to be able to get access until, like, tonight. I think he's coming tonight. They don't care who you are, man. They're not playing. What's it like for you guys? What's it like for the media? Like, you obviously only have certain places that you can go. But I saw, like, media posting, like, the pool. And I think you posted, like, some wine, right? Yeah, I took that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was the drinking wine post. Uh, when I woke up in the morning, I like <laughs> eight bottles of wine in a row. Uh, I like, mean, look, maybe you're good. doing a tasting. You know, you don't have to drink all of yeah. them. I was doing a tasting, all right. <laughs> I mean, but do you guys have any ability to like, you know, not like, socialize to the point where it's you know well, unsafe? I but like, think, like you have a pool, and this is like funny. Like we have a pool, one pool. And it's simple, like, imagine, like, a courtyard by Marriott pool. Right. This ain't the risk Carlton pool. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we have a gym. Let's say it's a residence in gym. <laughs> right? Let's say the risk Carlton gym. Right. So you're seeing what I'm talking about, right? I'm yes. not clowning it. I'm just telling you what it is. So we got people from other teams coming to use our stuff. I'm like, y'all got, like, amazing stuff like why are you coming over here we got this little piddly stuff let us have our piddly stuff like Miles <laughs> simon was swimming in our pool the other day i'm like y'all probably got an infinity pool over here over there why are you in our pool 
I was mad. Like, go, <laughs> yo, go on your water slide. I saw your water slide. We ain't got no water Look, slide. Look, we can't go over to your side. Yeah. yeah. Like, so we're watching, like, I'm going to the, I went to Lakers practice today, and, like, outside the, each play, each, the teams had their, like, rooms where they could go to meals and hang out and stuff like that. Oh, they had the lady with the chef hat, the tall glass, and the only person that was funny, Taco Fall was the only one that could, the glass is like too, too, eight feet too high. short for him. Yeah, no, like, she, they're like getting sliced steak and quail and duck and stuff, and they're like handing it to them, and then we're going to our place, and it's like some refrigerator, like <laughs> over the refrigerator, oh, what did mom cook today, you know? So I don't want to hear no uh griping for the players they got it really good so the players do have good like appropriate food i, I heard food for them is over the last three days got tremendously better okay that's good plus, i mean look they are they could get, plus they could get takeout like one of the coaches told me he got like takeout from like ruth chris or something like who gets takeout from ruth chris right you know what i mean well everybody these so, days but so they're like offering them food like in by their team room that they could go get all day and then they're getting per diem. Right. So they have restaurants that they can, we don't have any restaurants though. <laughs> we don't We don't have one, no restaurants and no bars. So we gotta buy our own liquor and we, we, our food is like, it's like college. Like we go to a, a food area and I'm like, so today I opened up the, uh, I don't know if you care to know all this stuff. But it's kind uh, of no, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I opened up this, it said hot fridge. Only thing I don't like is they they want us to keep our hands clean, but everybody got to touch this fridge right. to get their food. That's like the only thing I've had a problem with. So you open it up. Okay, today they have um, croissant with egg, and then they have some bacon down here, so you can take bacon. And then I told somebody today, I'm like, I don't really eat pork like that. Can y'all bring like, yeah, turkey's bacon yesterday. Can you bring that? And, you know, us Californians eat healthier. Right. I didn't see nothing gluten-free, but <laughs> like, so I brought, you'll laugh at this. I brought my own like granola. Mm. I bought that because I want to like mix it with Greek yogurt in the morning and have some turkey bacon. And another thing you'll laugh at over there in the corner, I, I brew my own coffee. Well, you're just making it work, right? Yeah, I'm making it like home. So I, at home, I grind my own beans. Oh, you got like, I got a whole. No, I grind my own beans. Malika Andrews, like, yo, can I get a cup of that uh, Spears <laughs> coffee? Like, yeah, I got it. So you're gonna I turn got into Starbucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got to be quiet about it because now she's gonna start telling people, and I'm gonna have people knocking on the door, asking me if she's like the coffee here is horrible. But your coffee's amazing. So I gave her a cup. So I'm like, well. Just text me a time and I'll just leave a cup outside my door. But I'm brewing my own coffee here. And then I'm I'm a, I'm I I bought a wine I'm a wine snob too. Right. I do that a little bit. I did. And then I bought a wine fridge and they haven't brought it yet. So you can have stuff like shipped to your room? Oh well, I went to the uh shipping center. It's like UPS. Like a n not UPS store, like a UPS distribution center. <laughs> The, la the lady told me that uh, somebody, I overheard somebody yelling there today, the boxing equipment's here. Boxing equipment? Yeah, and then another lady I overheard, I asked her, I was like, um, I asked somebody, I'm like, what's the most, the heaviest piece of package you've had? And they said 300 pounds. Do, do, you, do you remember, did you see the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. Remember at the end when they put the Ark of the Covenant in the warehouse? <laughs> yeah. And they had all those boxes. That's how this. That's how this place looks. <laughs> it's like all these boxes of stuff that just keeps coming in. So I'll show you this. So in here, since I have a refrigerator and I'm mad because my wine fridge doesn't hasn't came yet. But I got like Yao Ming. Okay. Frank Family Vineyards. Very nice. So your fridge is just basically full of wine right now and not. Not food. James O. And then Judd Wellenbrock from Charles Cruz. He makes a private stash every year. Like he has to make one barrel a year to keep his uh, his license. Okay. So it's called Santanala. This is his own private. And he doesn't, 
He just sells it to friends. Okay. So, so you have that as well. But I, I got to mess with this refrigerator because I think it's too cold. So, you know, I like my, all my wine kind of the same temperature. Yeah. I'm not snob about it. Like, I like for the red wine to be like a little bit cold. I think this is too cold. Yeah. So I keep all I, my, I, I keep all mine together. So I'm like fussing at this lady every day about my wine fridge. <laughs> I think somebody, I think somebody got me, man. Because <laughs> it came a week ago and nobody could find it. Oh uh, yeah. Someone got you for sure. LeBron might've got you. No, nah, he, he he probably has a real fridge. <laughs> That's true. He don't have no thing. Mine mine was twelve bottles, <laughs> but I got people like they don't have uh, microwaves in here, so I think people are starting to order microwaves. So people are really just like setting up shop yeah. for the long haul. If, if you could be here for three months, you might as well be at home. It's wild. Yeah. It's it's it really is. It's like the wildest time. But I'm really impressed with everything that everybody is doing and just making it work. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, 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 we'll be bounded by this no matter what. And, and I really hope it, it stays on the positive in every facet, especially the health facet. And I, I want to hear, I hope there's no like altercations or there's like, there's no, there's no problems, no, no, no positive tests. I, I think at some point, some, it's, it's inevitable somebody will get it somehow. You know what I mean? Maybe from that fridge that I keep talking about. They're probably going to listen. They're going to have to change the fridge thing. Like, I'm, a, I'm with you, though. I've never been a big handle person. Like, I don't like touching door handles. So, so I got to start wearing these again. That's what I keep forgetting. Gloves, but yeah. So you want to see what they got in the abundance here? Yes. Don't be jealous. You ready? Okay. Oh, so they have all of them. These are like all the Clorox wipes man. in the world. Look, I got more than two packs in here. That's I got crazy. the big wipes. That's crazy. I didn't I got, know what you... Yo, I got... Oh, who want these? <laughs> on eBay right now, son. I have no idea what you were about to show me. That, that was the not Clorox what I expected. Wipes. But that's... Yes. Now I see why I don't I be jealous. On eBay. I need to start selling these. You could. You could, you really could, and that's a shame. But that's that's where the, that, of course Disney has all of them. Of course, that makes sense. Yeah. All the tests, <laughs> all the Clorox wipes. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on with me. It was great to talk to you. It's it's fascinating what you guys are are dealing with and and going through. But I'm telling you, like, man, we're all rooting for you. At rooting for the guys. I, I'm I'm so excited to have uh, basketball back. I got my I got my Miami Heat on uh -oh. right now. Hey, I'm ready. I'll tell you this: the uh, Eastern Conference is going to be a battle royal, boy. I, I mean, think it's very interesting. Like, I don't think it's like anybody's. There's like six teams that literally could win the East. Yeah, and I... your your team is one of them. I know. And the pro the thing about your team. Is you got two sinister people, Jimmy Butler and Iguodala, and they can somehow figure out a way to will that team to up. They're gonna upset somebody, and when it happens, say, "Yep, I, you told me." <laughs> Miami Heat are gonna mess up somebody's plans. I don't know who yet, but Jimmy Butler and Iguodala together are two of the most sinister masterminds in NBA history. So they gonna scare their team into playing good. <laughs> I just think it's like it's such a unique situation that I don't really think you can predict who with like any sense of conviction what's because we don't know what's going to happen there's so many factors in it you can't really predict who's going to win the championship or be in the finals like you have in years past no I mean and then it's funny I keep getting asked your question yeah there's going to be an asterisk whoever wins this this will be the hardest NBA championship ever won and they'll always be remembered and there's going to be documentaries I mean this is and we're only a weekend. I know. <laughs> like, I know. Like, like this lady told me today, she's like, yeah, we got three more months still. And I'm like, dang. Like, I've been here eight days, but I feel like I've been here already eight months. <laughs> well, keep, uh, keep focused. But, it, I, but it's good. It's fun. It's cool. It is. It's basketball heavy. It is. It's like sleepaway camp hoop. In a I mean, you can make an argument that there has never been more collection of basketball talent 
on earth in one spot in here, Olympics included. The best like in the this, world in the bubble. It, it starts going down tomorrow with the preseason. I mean, like the you know exhibitions. Uh, and then next week, let's go. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Let's see wait. if your Kai do anything. <laughs> I we'll hope see. so. I hope so. I'm looking forward to it, man. I miss basketball so much. Um, oh, you a. Hey. But you know what's going to trip you out, and I'm going to prepare you for it. Like, the games are going to be going on all day. Have you thought about that? Like, I think, like, games are going to start at, like, 11, and and, and last game might be, like, 9 o'clock. That's wonderful. Like, I'd love to sit on my couch and watch sports all day. I've, I, I've, you're going to have basketball from the time you – and you're on the West Coast, so you're going to have yeah. it from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. Good. I need to, I need to get sick of, sick of watching basketball. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been so long. Well, uh, super proud of you going through a Thank lot you. out there. Um, I know this is just the beginning, but we're all we're all counting on you guys. And um, we got we got your back from from afar. But appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely catch up with you again. Um, oh, yeah. Over the next and I'll say months. I need I need a gourmet care package from L.A., man. Can I get? Yeah, I got to get you I'll like get some, some vegan chips. Bread. <laughs> <laughs> like some some uh, seaweed chips. What else we got out here? Some from Trader Joe's. Yeah. Uh, I'll get you some. Um, maybe some. Like, do you like Chardonnay? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get you yeah. a get you a Cali Chardonnay. Yeah. We got yeah, my up. wine fridge will be located by then. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm telling you, like, somebody, hey, somebody hey, got you. Know, you know, it's bad because I I said uh, so should I call Best Buy and let them know? They're like, no, no. We're still looking for it. I'm like, mm-hmm. Somebody got me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would honestly, I would just call them and say that it's not been delivered yet, and they'll probably bring you another one. Yeah. And then if you have then two, have to... then if you have two, then you just return it. But at least then you get one. No, I'll just have more wine. <laughs> then you have two fridges. <laughs> <laughs> so it on offer up, offer up afterwards. All right, Mark. It was so good to see you. Uh, thank you so much. Stay safe and healthy and, you know, as sane as you can. And uh, we'll talk soon. Yes, ma'am. Good to talk to you. You too.